Hello and welcome to my Girl Scout Brownies. If you don't know my name by now, my name is Sonora and I work for the Girl Scouts of Suffolk County in the Programs Department. Since we've been home for such a long time during the pandemic, um, we've been quarantined, we've been working virtually to give you girls a chance to get your badges over the computer, over um, the internet. So today is, ba well, this week is based around the arts. So today I'll be doing the Brownie Potter badge. This is a really exciting badge for me to do. I used to work in an art studio. I was an intern there as well. So I'm gonna show you um, a couple of techniques and skills on how to hand build a coil pot and a pinch pot. Unfortunately, you don't have access to potter's clay, but that's okay because I'm going to show you a recipe for a baker's clay, which will allow you to make a sculpture or a gift or even a necklace um, for your family, for your friends, for yourself. Um, and it takes only a couple of ingredients, only takes about 25 minutes to cook and harden. And once it comes out and cools off, you can paint it and keep it as a keepsake. So that's really exciting. I also think it's really cool that we get to relate our pottery um, to Juliet Gordon Lowe, who was the founder of the Girl Scouts. She loved all sorts of art, but her favorite type of art to do was sculptures. And there's actual uh, there's an actual sculpture of her niece who was the first American Girl Scout. So I think that's really cool that we can relate to somebody that's so important to um, to us. I'll also show you uh, bisqueware, which after you put your clay in a kiln at a very very high degree. Um, when it comes out and it's hardened and ready to glaze, that's what bisqueware is. And I have an example of one that I'll show you. Unfortunately, you don't have that, but don't worry about it. Okay, so um, if we're ready, let's get started. which is a clay that you can actually make at home because most of us don't have access to terracotta or we don't have access to earth clay or ceramic clay. If you went to a studio, we don't have access to that, especially right now since everything's closed. So I'm going to show you a recipe that's easy to follow. It's kind of like um, a cookie dough recipe, but obviously you're not gonna eat this. It's base is made out of um, all-purpose flour. You'll need some table salt. This is kosher salt, but you'll be using table salt. Either one should work fine. This is just a little thicker. You'll need a big bowl, a wooden spoon. I'm gonna use a quarter cup container. I also have a rolling pin just to make it easier. You'll need some tap water. I'm also using a, um, a liquid Pyrex measure, uh, measuring glass. Just um, This is how I like to measure out my water. I also have some cookie cutters with nice cute little patterns. Um, these are seasonal ones, but you can use whatever you'd like. You can also hand build a structure if you'd like. 
um, a sculpture. Um, or you can even use other types of cookie cutters or you can use a plastic knife to carve out um, a design that works just as well. Okay, and so the first step that you'll also need to do is you will line your cookie sheet or cooking pan with um, parchment paper so that your dough does not stick and you'll preheat your oven to 300 degrees. And of course, always ask an adult for help when you are baking something. So in my bowl, I'm going to combine my flour. So the a recipe asks for four cups of flour, one and a half cups of salt, one and a half cups of water. But because I'm not making a lot of these, I'm going to cut my recipe in half. So I'll be using a little bit less than those, but you can follow the bigger, um, the bigger measurements. So I'm gonna put two cups of... Now, I only have my quarter cup container, so I'm going to be using eight of these just because eight quarter cups will equal two, two cups. I'm going to be getting messy here. Two, three. Perfect. I don't know why I just left that in there. Okay. All right. And I'm going to use my salt. So same thing. And then I'm going to use one and a half, I'm um, sorry, I'm going to be using three quarter cups because I did split my recipe in half. So I'm going to use three quarter cups of, um, of water. So. Okay. So I'm going to start by mixing up my dough with my spoon and once it starts coming together a little bit more I am going to get my hands down in there um, to really start mushing everything together so don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Okay so as you see it's starting to come together. I'm gonna actually get my hands in there. And I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Really get that. So if it is a little too dry, you can add a little bit more of your water. If it's too wet, you can add a little bit more of your flour. So that's what's nice is that you can actually alter this depending on how your dough is doing. Okay, so I would like to add a little bit more water. That might have been a little too much, but we'll see. I do have some more flour in here, so it should be okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to add a little more flour. So 
So you'll start to see it's starting to come together as a bowl. Okay. Now I'm going to let this sit for a second. I'm going to also get some more parchment paper so that way I can protect my surface so that I could roll this out on my... So I cleaned up my work face a little bit. I also put down some parchment paper and taped that down just so that I could keep it nice and sturdy while I'm working with my dough. So I'm going to roll this out with a rolling pin. And you're gonna wanna have this rolled out. I guess that didn't hold too well. That's okay. I'm gonna hold that down, use one hand, try to make this work. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to make this um, about a quarter of an inch thick. So a little bit thinner than the um, length of your thumb. You can put your, line it up. As long as you don't make it too thin, you don't want this to burn in the oven. Okay. So I'm Irish and I'm gonna do a shamrock. Okay, so I'm gonna push that down. Okay, shake it up a little bit. I'm sure you've made sugar cookies before. And I'm gonna get this shape out. And I'll put this on my cooking sheet. Like so. All right, let's see what else I got. Okay, I'm gonna do bunny. And I think I'd also like to perhaps build, you know, I'm going to keep mine flat, but you can build whatever you'd like. So let's see what else I have. A heart. This would be kind of cute. I believe an indentation. So let's see. I'm going to roll this out into a bowl. Flatten it, make it a nice bowl shape, and I'm going to use my cookie, push down, and up, and I have a little indentation. That'd be nice. Okay, so I'm going to put the rest on my, well, the bunny on my cooking sheet. I'm going to pop that in the oven, and I'm going to keep an eye on it for about 25 minutes. So most of us don't have access to um, actual clay. Um, lucky for me, I do. So I do wanna show you how to mold clay into two different um, forms of pots. We'll be talking about coil pots and a pinch pot. So I just wanna discuss with you, when you store clay, um, this is actually made from the earth. So made out of soil, dirt, rain, water, until it gets to a consistency where it's clay. So don't be alarmed, I have <laughs> mine's wrapped up in some in some paper towels. Because I wet the paper towels so it would be it'll stay nice and moist. So I'm gonna grab a piece of clay. Okay, and with my clay I want to wedge it. So wedging this consists of pushing down with the palm of your hand and then you can fold it back over. Push, push, push. And fold it back over. All right, now the purpose of wedging clay is just like a pizza pie would do. If you're making a pizza and I have my dough, I want to make sure that I make a crust out of it. That's why the dough gets stretched, is to get rid of the, the air pockets and the bubbles so that it doesn't explode in the oven. So the type of oven you'd be using for clay is called a kiln. And a kiln is 
way over 500 degrees, way over a thousand degrees. It's very, very high so that it can harden your clay into pottery, like the pictures that were shown in the slideshow before. Okay, so I'm not gonna be continuing wedging this just because I'm not gonna actually fire this. I don't have a kiln at home, but I wanted to show you how to make a oh. your two hands like so what I like to do is I like to take my pointer and my middle finger and put it towards the center and as I am rolling it wherever the thicker parts are I just gently I don't push down too hard I'm just gently separating my fingers You're going to want this to look like a snake. Okay. All right. I'm going to make a few more coils and then we'll come right back. So typically when you're working with clay, you usually have a cup next to you um, called slip. And what slip is, is your clay, it's um, extra pieces of clay and it's soaked in water. It kind of is a, um, a clay cement, if you will, or a glue for attaching pieces of clay together. So, um, excuse me for a second. Should have had this all ready. All right, so when you are creating anything and you're putting pieces of clay together, you always want to do to remember these terms: score and slip in that order. What scoring is is so I'm going to show you with a small piece of paper. I'm um, sorry, clay, and I'm going to also spray my clay with water because sometimes it gets dry if you don't work with it for a few minutes. So if I had two pieces of clay and I wanna put this piece of clay together and that piece of clay together, what I'm going to do is a tic-tac-toe. I'm using a toothpick, you can use a plastic fork, you can even use an old toothbrush, that's a really good tool to use to make some um, rough um, surface to your clay. So I'm going to make a crisscross on one side and crisscross on the other. This allows the clay to adhere to each other, to adhere to itself, okay? And then I would be using actual slip, but what I'm going to do, since I'm not putting this in the kiln, is I'm going to use pieces of clay to put these together. Okay, and I'd put the two pieces together like this. Right, and then I'd smooth out those edges with my fingers so that way it wouldn't pull apart when it was in the oven, um, in the kiln. So for this next part, I'm going to be creating a bottom to, because we've created our coil, so now we have to create the pot part of our coil. So I'm gonna flatten this out. Okay, and I want to trace this to be a circle. It's not going to be perfect. That's okay. All right, so now we're removing this part. I just carved out around the clay. It's kind of hard to work on this surface. going to redo that <laughs> okay and I'm gonna actually hold it up so with a coil pot what you'll want to do is layer your coils one on top of another by scoring and slipping so if I have my piece of clay down here 
what I'll do is take my, and I'll score, and I'll score here too, right? And I would be using my slip. I'm just roughening up those edges and I would be using my actual slip, but I'm gonna use a little bit of water and I'm going to wrap my coils. All right, and what I usually like to do is I like to cut it in the opposite direction. So if I did it this way, then I will do it this way. So that way when I put it together, it'll line up like so. So you would continue this process until, I'm just doing this a little quicker just so I could show you and we can get onto our pinch pots. And I actually hear my oven going off for our homemade clay. All right, so you would do the same thing and it would create a coil pot. See how it's starting to layer up there? And what you could do um, once you would put it together is you would use your thumbs and you would actually smooth the insides of it to create one solid piece of clay. You could see. Okay. Way to create the pot. So I used a wet paper towel over this piece of clay just because it was getting a little bit hard because we were working with it for so long. Um, so now I'm going to roll this up into a ball. Okay. So now what you'll do is you're going to take your thumb and you are going to push your thumb about halfway through. You don't want to push your thumb all the way through. You don't want this to be too deep because you're going to be working with it. And if you have a thin spot here, if you were to put it in the kiln, it would explode, it would break, and you don't want that to happen. So now, as the title says, you are going to begin to pinch. As you are pinching, so you do this motion, pinching, right? And as you're pinching, you're going to use your other, um, your opposite hand, and it's gonna actually help guide you through it. So you'll still be um, twisting it. You're gonna be turning it around while you're pinching it. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing that. If you get the hang of it, you can also use your other thumb if you're up for the challenge. And as you see, once I start pinching it, I'm, oh, I'm making that hole a little bit bigger. Okay, you can even let it kind of get flat on the bottom so that you can start working with it a little bit more. You can use toothpicks, you can use whatever you'd like to carve in there. I'm trying to see if I have my, I do have a clay tool. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it right now. it right now but I'm going to use my toothpick too um, if you you know you can spray your thumb smooth out your the outsides of it so if you let your clay 
um, when you're working with it, if you are going to be putting it in the kiln, you can actually let it sit a little while and it starts to dry out to a consistency that will be great for um, adding designs to this. So I'll show you. So for instance, if I wanted to create um, some stripes, I could come in here and I could add some pretty details to this. Sometimes I like to do like different shapes. So see how I'm adding shapes to that? So for instance, if I wanted to fire it, I could paint these all, all these shapes different colors when it came out of the kiln. But whenever you're using clay, you also want to make sure that you don't eat or drink out of them until you get a, um, they have food, um, they have glazes that, that are specifically made to be food safe. So if you use a regular glaze on your pottery after it's fired, then you cannot eat or drink out of it. But you could make a mug and if you have food safe glaze, which you could ask um, if you ever go to an art studio and you do some pottery, um, you could definitely ask for that. So that way you could use it in your kitchen, drinking out of it, having a cup of tea, or whatever. All right, so I took out my um, my baker's clay out of the oven. As you can see, I'm gonna drop it just so you could hear it. But that's how hard it gets after it comes out of the oven. Um, so the reason why you wanna keep checking on it, mine took about 25 to 27 minutes to completely harden. Um, you don't wanna put, uh, you don't wanna leave it for much longer because you don't want it to burn because then it'll change the color. But um, this is a nice shade, so this is a great example. Um, so I'm gonna actually do my shamrock, which is the one that I wanna do. Um, I actually left it on my wax paper because this will be nice to put paint on, easy cleanup. As you can see, it lets you paint very nice. It's painting so smoothly on there. So like I said in the introduction to this program, if you wanted, you could put a hole, but before you cook it, you should put the hole in there. Um, you could ask a parent to help you. You could either put it through with a, uh, a toothpick or you can even use a chopstick. Um, anything that would help you make a hole through it. Um, obviously, if it's soft before you cook it, it's very easy to poke your hole through it. So I'm going to complete painting my shamrock and I'm going to add a little bit of Mod Podge if you have it at home. If you don't, you can also use some clear glue or white glue and let it dry completely. It'll act as a sealant and it'll keep your paint on nice and um, for a very long time. All right, so I finished. I added some sparkles and a little bit of different um, shades of green to kind of make it tie dyed. And I wasn't able to, I didn't add the Mod Podge yet. I don't want the sparkles to get everywhere yet. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight before I paint it with the Mod Podge, but. So this is an example of um, Bisqueware. As you can see, it's a terracotta color. 
which is an earth made clay. So this means that somebody created this pot and when they created the pot, then they put it in the kiln. And once it came out of the kiln, this is the hardness that it would have. So this would be, um, if you were in an art studio doing actual pottery, you'd be using um, a glaze instead of acrylic paint. You could use acrylic paint, um, but it wouldn't last as long. So with bisqueware, you need to put it in the oven one more time. So if I were at a studio, I would do a layer of my glaze and then I would put that back in the kiln so that it could get fired again for it to be a final product. But I'm going to paint this. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I painted mine yellow and teal. I did a little splatter effect on there. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm actually going to plant. Um, I did a gardener badge last week with our juniors. So I'm gonna actually add my, my uh, daffodil in here. So it'll look really nice. All right, girls, so thank you for joining me for our Potter Badge today. I hope that you had a lot of fun and that you get to make this recipe to create your own um, pottery at home, paint it, take a picture, send it to our Facebook. Um, maybe it'll be posted. That'll be really exciting. Um, and I hope that you have a good rest of your week. We'll see you next week.